Hello guys, this is Jimmy from Chaos Group here and in this video I want to talk a little bit about Phoenix FD in Maya and more specifically I want to talk about rendering. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, simulations, options, how you can simulate uh, flames, liquids or splashes, things like that, there is another video about that. Uh, I think it's about half an hour long and you can find it on our YouTube channel. In this video, however, I want to focus on rendering and I want to show you a method of uh, setting up your renderings in a much uh, faster way. So, uh, as you can see, I've already finished my simulation. I have a couple of frames here of this uh, fire going on. And you see that my grid is really, really fine. So right now my graphics card even has hard time um, rendering this inside of the viewport. Now, if I want to render this, of course, I need to use V-Ray because this is the only way to do this inside of Maya. And you'll notice that our flame is very, very bright. We actually have it so bright that uh, our values are in the numbers of hundreds and this is uh, too much for my uh, window here to show. So we get this uh, cutoff. And I can actually see these colors if I decrease the exposure, you'll see that we have some uh, color information in there. Uh, the reason for this is pretty obvious. This uh, flame is very, very hot and because uh, we're rendering it in a physically accurate manner, we get this uh, very, very bright areas here. So let's see what we can do about the rendering. And you'll notice that uh, when I hit render, obviously we need to wait for all those buckets to complete. So if I start adjusting the different settings, uh, this will take some time. If I want to, uh, I can actually use VRRT. So I can go to rendering, I enable the geometry mode and use the RT instead. But right now what is going to happen is that VRRT is going to have to go through this um, dense um, volumetric shader in, in, of Phoenix and it takes some time. Uh, actually there is a much better way to do this. So I'm going to stop the RT, uh, turn off this geometry mode and uh, hide the rendering for, for a second and I'm going to go to preview. And in here we have the options of how we're going to preview uh, our simulation inside of my viewport here. And down there I have these options which are called shading preview. So I can enable this and I can see immediately how much uh, memory my graphics card is going to need. I have this down sampling option, which I, I'm going to increase for a second so that I see a lower quality preview, but my graphics card is going to be able to work on that uh, much faster. So we'll have a couple of seconds uh, for my graphics card to realize what I'm asking from it. And we're going to see uh, this preview immediately. So right now I can start working on this and I can adjust my rendering much faster than instead of uh, using the standard approach with rendering. So just to see the performance and just to see how it is, it is, I'm just going to play around with the settings in the rendering. And we have a bunch of things here that we actually don't need right now. Uh, if you want to control how this flame looks, we need the options in these uh, three rollouts. We have emission, which basically controls the emissive part of my flame, which is the bright part. Uh, we have diffuse color, which is the color of the smoke. And we have transparency. So, for example, if I want to change the color of the smoke, I'm just going to click the simple color option here and I can make the smoke green. And this is just a little bit too much, so let's make it a little bit like that. And you'll notice that uh, my flame isn't uh, very transparent. This is The reason for this is that we're using a simple mathematical formula to control the transparency. Instead of doing this, I'm going to switch to temperature, which means that uh, the transparency of my fluid is going to be uh, de dependent on the temperature of the fluid. So as you can see, we get a different result right now. And uh, I have these options here which allow me to control the transparency. So for example, I can make things more opaque or less opaque. And uh, you also notice that as I increase this, this is the opacity of my flame, it also gets brighter. This is because basically the brightness is multiplied by the transparency. So as I make this flame less and less uh, uh, opaque, I'm seeing uh, less light coming from it as well. So I can play with this and uh, maybe adjust the transparency a little bit more. So it looks better and I can also, if I want to, uh, remove some of the smoke here as you can see. So I'm making this area where the fluid is not very hot, less uh, visible and I can make a sharp peak over here. So this way I'm forcing uh, Phoenix to show me this, those areas of the fluid where it's not very hot uh, but uh, actually it's not emitting any light and it's taking the color from the uh, from the simple color that I get for smoke there. So 
by making sharp peaks like that, I can really uh, fake very, very detailed smoke like this one. Okay, so let's play a little bit with the um, uh, settings here for uh, emission. I have this luminance scale, which is basically the maximum brightness of my flame. So if I increase this, the whole flame is going to become brighter. And if I decrease it, uh, the whole thing is going to become darker. And li I like darker flames because they look uh, better, uh, in my opinion. And I can also play with this curve here and make some parts of the fluid brighter and other parts darker. And as you can see, by adjusting this curve, I can really, really uh, have uh, artistic control over uh, the way my flame looks. So I don't have to be uh, necessarily physically accurate. I can make things uh, less accurate and uh, control them through a more uh, artistic approach rather than using uh, the standard physical accuracy. So let's say this is kind of the flame I want. It's not exactly the one that I want, but it looks okay. And right now we have this uh, kind of uh, rough preview. I can increase the quality here if I want to. So let's go back to the settings for the preview. And I can decrease the downsampling. So right now, uh, we're going to give more data to my graphics card and it's going to render a better quality image. Okay, so this is the, uh, you can see this is a, a little bit better quality. And uh, what I can do actually, uh, if I want to, is I can go down here and click on this uh, safe animation preview. So right now, uh, V-Ray is going to run, um, not V-Ray, Phoenix is going to run this simulation through my graphics card. And uh, it's going to save a preview of the animation. So uh, I can uh, basically very quickly render the whole animation and uh, see how it looks and if I'm happy with it. I can show it to my supervisor and... Uh, I can get the decision much faster instead of having to render the whole uh, animation using V-Ray. So uh, it's a very useful option for cases like this if you want to preview your animations. And uh, this um, here is the path where we're going to save this animation. It's basically using a keyword, which means that I, this is going to be saved in my project. Uh, if I go to the project here in the data, wherever I'm keeping um, uh, the frames for my simulation, I'm going to keep also uh, the frames for this uh, preview. So this gives me a very basic preview, but I can get the idea. And uh, if I want to adjust something, I can do this very quickly. So uh, as you can see, uh, with just one uh, simple checkbox here that says enable, I can enable and disable this uh, very quick preview, which will allow me to immediately see the effect uh, of my changes, the changes that I do to the rendering options. And this will allow me to uh, finish my projects much, much uh, quicker. And uh, obviously, I'll have more free time. So uh, this concludes my, uh, this video. Uh, I hope that you liked what I have to show you. And uh, until next time, I'm Dimitar Krstev Jimmy, and I thank you for watching.